All right, so before we get started with the video, I just wanted to take a little time out to give a huge thanks to John Wright, owner of the Summit Lawnmower Company, who gave me a handful of helpful advice for what I'm gonna show you in this video. Now in this video, I'll finally get around to explaining my process for attaching the Carlisle wheels to the motors. Now John basically free willingly sent me a message on YouTube back in January, I believe, recommending the type of tires I should use and how I should extend my hub and the elongated list just goes on and on. And the thing is I didn't pay John anything or I didn't even initialize the first conversation. He just offered to lend a helping hand, which is always highly appreciated. But anyway, just a quick overview about what John does. In a nutshell, he builds professional residential and commercial remote control lawnmowers. And I must say, I was really blown away when I first stumbled upon his website and saw the images and the videos of the RC lawnmowers he has built. So if you think my RC lawnmower is pretty cool, then really you haven't seen anything yet until you check out some of John's RC lawnmowers. So in a way, just wanted to take a little time out to show my appreciation for someone who didn't have to offer a helping hand to help me accomplish one of my goals a lot quicker. So again, thanks John, and now let's get back to the video. All right, so after receiving a few pointers from John and doing a little research, I could begin to work on my new wheels. Here you can see an example of what the completed modified wheel looks like. While mounting the wheel, I soon discovered I needed to create a hub extender. Creating this extender will prevent my wheel from rubbing against the motor enclosure. After consulting with John, I soon decided to use a series of washers to accomplish the task. So next what I'm going to do is repeat the process I used on the left wheel on the right wheel. I first needed to unscrew the cap nut on the shaft to take the wheel off. I saw that the motor used a double head round key to help rotate the wheel and I just set the key and the other components to the side. Next I used some vice grips and a torque wrench to help unscrew the hex bolts. After all the hex bolts were removed, I used a flat head screwdriver to remove the hub. Next, I positioned the hub over the new wheel so that I could see if the holes aligned correctly. I soon discovered that the holes on the wheels needed to have a slightly larger diameter for the hex bolts to fit. To accomplish this, I used a drill bit to widen up the holes. Next I checked to see if all four hex bolts could fit and I found that I had just enough space to fit all four. To 
To extend the hub, I used some flat washers. Next, I needed to measure out four sets of a series of washers that equaled a total length of one inch. So I also used four two inch hex bolts to help temporarily hold the washers. After I finished creating the four sets of washers, I began to construct the extended hub. To prevent the washers from falling off, I temporarily screwed on a stop nut. Next, I needed to attach the hub to the frame. So I made use of the other part of the rim to help keep the hex bolts pushed forward, which would help prevent the washers from falling off. In order to attach the hub, I needed to remove the stop nuts. Once the hub was in place and all four hex bolts were through the holes, I could temporarily screw the stop nuts back on. Next I needed to place the original washers back on the hex bolts. Next I just needed to tightly screw all the stop nuts back in place. Next I could finally put the new modified wheel back on the shelf. After the wheel was attached, I checked to make sure there was enough clearance between the motor enclosure and the wheel. Next I placed a few washers over the shelf bolt and I screwed back on the cap nut. Since the cap nut could only screw down so far, I needed to use some washers to make up for the extra gap that was created by the new wheel. Next I made sure both wheels could properly rotate. Then I pumped some air into the tires. As done before I performed another motion test. Here you can also see how the new wheels also gave my battery rack more clearance from underneath which the smaller wheels did not. After the motion test, I was confident enough to take the project outside to perform a basic operation test.
guys and ladies that does conclude this video now i just want to take a break from editing video and say a couple things before i end this particular video if you find these videos interesting or helpful a way that you can show me that is by liking a video or leaving comments below the particular video that you found interesting or helpful or you can subscribe to my youtube channel like my facebook page follow me on twitter or you can share with others that you think may find this particular video interesting so any of those things or many more will actually show me that you guys appreciate all the time and effort that i'm putting into these videos and it also boosts my motivation to spend more effort and time with trying to make these more informative and trying to get them out on youtube and on the web a lot quicker so with that said i will see you in the next video